We shift our focus now to Ukraine. We're now 230 days into the war and things remain the same. The Russian offensive continues, as does the Ukrainian resistance. The past few hours have been critical, courtesy Russia's relentless bombings. For more than three days now, Moscow has been raining missiles on Ukraine, most of them on busy streets and city centers. Take a look at these images now. They're from Zaporizhia. Russia dropped 12 missiles here on Tuesday. They destroyed several residential buildings. Visuals from the site show emergency workers rescuing a family trapped in rubble. Similar images have emerged from the capital, Kyiv. On Monday, it fell victim to a sustained bombing spree. The attacks have left behind a trail of destruction. Visuals show that the residents of Kyiv are sweeping up glass shards, hauling rubble, and fixing plywood sheets over the windows of their homes, many of which have been left without power or water, basic essentials. The victims say they have no words to describe the horror they have witnessed. Listen into a few voices now. There are no respectable words to describe the horror we lived through after the attack of the Russian invaders. I cannot even refer to them as people. They are worse than zombies, creatures that want to destroy the Ukrainian nation. It's the apocalypse. There are no other words for it. It is terror and war against innocent civilians who have not expected this. Now, this was the latest as far as the war is concerned. And now let's talk about the efforts to end it. The ongoing diplomatic meetings and talks. On Tuesday, the leaders of the G7 held a meeting, vowing to bolster Ukraine's defenses. In a joint statement, the group said, and I quote, we will continue to provide financial, humanitarian, military, diplomatic and legal support and will stand firmly with Ukraine for as long as it takes. This was on Tuesday. Today, there was another important meeting. A meeting of NATO's defense ministers. They assembled in Brussels earlier today to step up and sustain support for Ukraine. Also to strengthen their own defenses. And this was the first big NATO meeting after Russia annexed more territory. So what went down at this meeting? A couple of major decisions were taken. To start with, NATO allies decided to provide air defense systems to Ukraine so that it could combat the ongoing Russian missile attacks. In fact, a day before this meeting, Ukraine had already received the first of four IRIS-T SLM air defense systems, which were manufactured by Germany. Other countries are expected to follow suit. I welcome that uh, NATO allies uh, are providing uh, air defense systems. Um, that is extremely important. And I welcome the recent announcement by, uh, by uh, Germany and also the, uh, the delivery of German air defense systems uh, to Ukraine. Meanwhile, America too is following Germany's lead. Reports suggest that it plans to give Ukraine an air defense system which is used to protect the White House. It's called NASAMS, or the National Advanced Surface-to-Air Missile System. America has reportedly approved sending eight of them, with the first two to be delivered in the next few weeks. Meanwhile, Canada, another NATO member, plans to send 40 combat engineers to Poland. What for? To train Ukrainian soldiers. Remember, the Canadian Armed Forces have already trained more than 33,000 Ukrainian military personnel since 2015. But some aspects of this training were paused in February. Canada now plans to resume them. Listen in now to this statement by the Canadian Defence Minister. Today, I am announcing that in the coming weeks, Canada will deploy approximately 40 combat engineers to Poland to help Polish forces train Ukrainian sappers on engineer reconnaissance, explosives, mining and demining. Interestingly, Australia too is considering training Ukrainian troops. Its Prime Minister recently dialed the Ukrainian President and offered his resolute support against Russia. Reports say the training, however, would not take place in Ukraine. The process will take place outside of Europe. The place and date are yet to be finalized. So eight months into this war, this is where things stand. Russia is still raining missiles on Ukraine. Ukraine's allies are still bolstering its defenses.
But it's evident that efforts to end the war or even find a truce are going nowhere, sadly. Beyond World is One is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news updates on the move.